Just quick stir. It takes about 30 seconds to warm up. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Do be seated. Very warm well welcome to our 9.30 service. Lovely to see you all. Warm welcome to all those joining us online as well. Um, for those of you that were uh, able to come to the John Archer uh, event yesterday evening. I hope you had a, um, a fabulous time. For those of you that weren't able to be there, all I would suggest is talk to Alice Baker afterwards um, and ask her how on earth he did it because we, st we still don't know. I'll leave it at that. Just, uh, <laughs> just chat with, um, with Alice afterwards. It was a, a wonderful evening. We had over 130 people through the door, uh, which was brilliant. Great to work with other churches um, across Shepparton. Um, as well, and we'll be doing uh, future events as well, so do keep an eye out for that. Very nearly, oh, so very, it's quite frightening in a way, how now quickly Easter will soon be um, upon us. Um, services for uh, Holy Week, you'll see those um, on the notice sheet, they're also out um, on the board out there and on the back. Um, 
board are there. Do have a look at those uh, before you go if you're not taking notice of them already. Um, see on the back of our service sheet, um, bags of food, our food bank is in um, real kind of urgent need uh, currently of uh, various supplies. They are putting out so many um, food parcels into our community um, week on week. If you can give um, in any way, do uh, give. We now have a box um, here just in the porch. You can give it to, you can drop directly to the food bank at various times in the week. Or if you're in the high street, you can leave um, food parcels um, in Sainsbury's at the, um, there's a, a kind of a wooden basket just by the, um, the tills that's marked up there. And you can just put food straight into there as well. Do, do that if you can. Um, this evening at half past six, various members of the choir um, are singing an even song down at St Mary's Sunbury. If you'd like to go along to that, uh, do join them for that. Uh, and tomorrow at Cornerstone, we have a, a community lunch as well. Um, afterwards, if you'd like to stay for that lunch tomorrow morning, do have a word with Irene uh, before you leave this morning. Okay, I think that's oh, oh, by way of notices. Let's just take a moment to bring ourselves into the presence of God, who is here. Jesus said, when two or more are gathered in my name, there I am amongst them. He is here. He knows the concerns and the worries of your heart. He knows the challenges that you're facing. He knows the blessings that are happening in your life too. Through this service, reach out to him. Leave your worries and anxieties with him. Ask for a fresh outpouring of his presence and his spirit into your life. Second moment's quiet. Now we stand to sing our opening hymn, number 483, Restore, O Lord, the honour of your name. We stand together to sing number 483. <laughs>
Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. Let us confess our sins, remembering before God the times when we have fallen from temptation into sin. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Most merciful God, Father, 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 Father Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our Lord. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from 1 Peter, to chapter 2. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honour the emperor. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, Submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you are called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no sin was found in his mouth. When they heard, held their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. 
he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, said the woman, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where do you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Joseph, 
who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never be thirsty. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, replied, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. The Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. <coughs> the woman said, I know that the Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. This is the Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> reading again from the letter from, to the scattered Christian communities, probably mainly Gentile converts to the church. And churches then had no formal structures that we think of today, church buildings, formal liturgies. They were very much feeling their way. They were guided by locally elected bishops, acting as shepherds to God's people. And this letter is attributed to Peter, the Apostle. The authorship is not entirely clear, but it comes with his authority and his teaching. And it was sent to those scattered communities, trying to work out how they were to live as followers of Jesus. The purpose of the letter was to advise them to live in the world without being defined by the values of the society in which they lived. Instead, they were to live according to the example of Jesus Christ. As it says in the letter, For this you have been called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you may follow in his steps. So the writer of the letter looks specifically at the times when Jesus suffered. He suffered abuse, false accusation, violence. The times when we, as we read, would expect him to retaliate, very human reaction, to defend himself, as we certainly would in similar circumstances. Especially in the events leading up to his arrest, trial and crucifixion. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. I'm thinking of the time when Jesus was arrested. He was brought, first of all, before the high priest and the leaders of the Jewish community. And he was accused of blasphemy, of claiming to be God's son. But he didn't defend himself. He simply turned the accusations against them. You say that I am. 
and when he was brought before Pilate and accused of inciting political unrest against the authority of the Roman Empire by claiming to be a king, Pilate asked him a similar question. Are you the king of the Jews? Once again, he didn't defend himself or put up an argument, but turned this, the statement around. You say that I am. Then I think of the time when he was cruelly mocked and beaten by the soldiers after his arrest and trial. He endured physical violence but he endured it in silence. Jesus knew that these events would inevitably lead to his crucifixion. He suffered the abuse and injustice, but he chose instead the way of what God had chosen for him. Finally, as he suffered on the cross, he listened to those who mocked him and questioned him. Remember, they shouted, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. But still, he refused to retaliate or to defend himself. Instead, he cried out to God, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus gathered up the abuse, the exploitation, the violence and injustice that people committed towards others, towards himself. The actions and the words that damage and disfigure relationships between people, between individuals and between nations. He gathered them up through his suffering on the cross. He gathered up humanity's greed and violence and exploitation of God's creation that threatens to destroy our planet. He gathered them up in his suffering on the cross. And by the mystery of his death and resurrection, restored that relationship between the loving God and all people. As it says in the letter, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. The writer of the letter goes on to explain how this restored relationship with God through Jesus Christ gives us practical guidance on how we are to live. He says, respect the authority of the institutions of government. Show by the example of your good behaviour and your orderly behaviour that your faith, your faith is not a threat to society. <clears throat> it doesn't mean that as Christians we should tolerate injustice and exploitation. Especially in this country we have the privilege of living in a democracy in a free society, safeguarded by the law. And therefore, we have a Christ-like responsibility to speak up for those who suffer. Then he says, honour everyone. Treat others with respect and gentleness. It's easy when we are being treated well ourselves, but difficult not to react aggressively or defensively when we're criticised. And then he says, love the family of believers, those who belong to your community of faith, amongst whom you experience God's love and forgiveness and joy. But once again, it's easy to say, but sometimes challenging to live out. And then he says, fear God, not be fearful, but stand before God and see his holiness. Trust his faithfulness and his goodness. And those things are such wonderful guidance as to how we should live. 
But if we could only live up to these expectations, then we will be perfect as Christ is perfect. And of course we know it's quite impossible. But once again, we can take courage from the words of that letter. By his wounds, you have been healed. Where there is judgment and failure, Jesus offers us, by the cross, healing and forgiveness. His grace to make a new beginning each day, to try again, ultimately to be transformed by the gift of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we stand together in faith. And we say, we believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from light, God from right, to God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray. response to our prayers today is, generous God, pour out your Holy Spirit. Generous God, pour out your Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love your world. Scripture tells us, for you so loved the world that you gave. And Lord, this world that you love is broken and is hurting. Lord, this morning we pray for every person fleeing war, injustice, persecution. We pray for everybody finding themselves on a coastline, seeing a massive sea with enormous ships and needing to get into an inflatable dinghy to get to the other side. Lord, make our hearts open. Make our hearts free. Make our hearts to follow your words, to receive the stranger, the alien, and to love them. Lord, may as we, your church, shine as a beacon in this world to bring your hope and your healing. Generous God, pour out your Holy Spirit. 
by his wounds we are healed. For so many that we know who are ill, body, mind, spirit, broken by anxiety, overcome by grief, and in need of God's healing. Lord, we live before you Liz Stewart, George, Andy Reeves, Tony, Jamie Ashdown, Liz and Tony, James, Neil Pratchett, Linda, Sonia and Kevin, Norman Burrell, Elizabeth Coombs, Roger Merrick, Miranda Parr, Alfie, Christopher Smith, Laura, Judy Penn, Luke, and all who are known to us, not named this morning, they are in need of your healing power. And Peter's son as well. So sorry, I forgot his name. Jay. And Jay as well. Apologies, Peter. Bless you, Peter. Yeah. Thank you. We lift all those before you in need of God's healing. Generous God, pour out your Holy Spirit. Lord, you have called us to grow your kingdom. You've called us to reach out in faith, hope, and love. Lord, may we shine with those characteristics of you, looking not with our own eyes, but eyes of faith. Not looking at the despair, but reaching out with the hope that you bring and causing each other to love, not hate, as you do. Generous God, pour out your Holy Spirit. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand together for the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. the altar is sinking number 310. Jesus, we enthrone you.
God of wisdom, may the light of your eternal word, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, lead us in holiness and guide us to glory. We ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. It is right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and singing. <laughs> Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave the thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us into the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
by whom, and with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. <laughs>
pray together the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We stand to sing our final hymn. Number 333. Mm -hmm. to grow in holiness, to die yourself, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit may it rest upon you and all those whom you love, both this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Now go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.